Welcome back to the Rivet Up Racing Show. This is our third episode of the 2019 season. My name is Jay House Hunter. Make sure you subscribe to our Rivet Up Racing YouTube channel and make sure you follow us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Rivet Up Racing. Our first guest today is the, the uh, number one J driver, Jeremy Juvenowski. Now, did I pronounce that right or did I kill it? Uh, Jaranowski. It was. It sounded good. Pretty close. <laughs> I, I tried. I like too many, too many vowels in there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, first question, we were just talking off air before we're getting ready for the show. You said you've been out of it for 20 years, and now you've got back into it in the last year or so. What took you 20 years to decide to get behind that wheel again? Uh, well, growing up, my dad, he raced modifieds. Uh, Oh, he raced street socks, modifies, he raced on dirt a lot. So I grew up doing it. Um, we did it for pretty much since I was born, he was pretty much doing it. And by the time I turned 16, we uh, went to the Elmira Speedway, uh, Northern Michigan Speedway here in Elmira, right down the road, uh, opened back up. So um, I, that's when I got into it at 16, raced for a few years, modifies uh, with my dad. Um, and... At the time, there was, you know, a lot of different things went on, and uh, we kind of got out of it then, and, and other kinds of racing. Um, I did snow cross, uh, race motorcycles. We did mud bogs, and then my daughter, um, I happened to see the mini wedge thing, uh, was really advertised at Onaway Speedway, and the purse for the modifieds, pretty good purse, and my dad said, yeah, we could race again, you know, for that kind of uh, winnings. You know, they're paying pretty good. So, and, and we ended up getting the car for her and that was really fun. So that's really what brought us back into it. And uh, my dad just mentioned the other week that, uh, that he noticed, you know, it seems like the family's kind of together again, a lot more often in the summer. So it's, 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 it's a good thing. And that's the biggest thing this year is I've only done, this is the third episode regarding health and stuff over the spring. And biggest thing that people have said in the last three, three weeks is that, is family and that's one thing about i find short track racing is done is, is bringing family and friends together and no matter if it's a friday saturday sunday or monday tuesday it's the family gets together and it's a family event isn't it oh yeah and you get it, it's the whole family gets in there and you just can't you can't do it alone there's just too much to do um and even just the support from the stands is nice to have you know you get um, a lot of family up in the stands um but yeah, it's just a nice thing. It's it's a real family-oriented sport, and uh, with the mini wedges now with this series, it's getting the kids right into it, and uh, it's just a really good thing, really good deal. And like I said, you're up at Ken Ross last week, and let's say your daughter were up there, and it's something. And I'm not trying to be sexist or anything, but I know moms get a little nervous when the, when like say husbands or boyfriends or get on the track, or sometimes it's girlfriends get on the track. What what are you guys like as parents when she gets on the track with her car? Uh, definitely. I think I get more nervous when she's out there. Um, and I know I get a lot more emotional when she's out there. I know that like, uh, you know, uh, we just had a little incident last week and, you know, she drove her butt off and it ended up, you know, just kind of getting squeezed down. And it was a bit, it was, you know, one of them racing deals. You don't always get the calls, but when you're uh, watching as a parent, oh man, you can get wound right up. So you got to kind of, um, like I said, it's a lot easier when you're out in the car than watching, uh, you know, your your son or daughter out there. And it's something with you being a racer, it just adds a little bit more stress to it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's already, like I said, you, you know, just getting the mod ready. And sometimes you get off the trailer and uh, you're wondering what, what happened to the car over the week because it just doesn't want to turn. And you're working on that. And then the, and then you got to you got the mini wedge. You got to get them up there, too. And you're trying to get ready for timing in and. Uh, but like I said, that's where family comes in. You know, my wife's in there all the time. Um, uh, she's uh, my nephew races too, so my brother's in there, and, and you know, we all kind of step in, and you know, we all help out. So, like I said, it definitely comes back to family. And and and, and something. What is the significance with the one J? Uh, well, the one J is kind of new. I was number one. Uh, my dad was always forty-one. Um, ever since he started, was number 41. And then when I drove the modified, uh, Northern Michigan Speedway opened on Sunday evenings when they opened back up in the mid-90s to late-90s. Um, 
I drove his uh, dirt. He'd race his dirt modified Friday night, Saturday night. And then I would race that on Sunday because he had another modified. I would We would switch over. I was 16. I would race it then. And it was number 41 the first year. And I kind of wanted to stick with 41. But then we were talking. My dad's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe you should get, you know, get your own number. And um, I decided just to shorten it up to number one. And um, it was just something I'd stuck with. And then there was a lot of them. First couple races, I was always racing against other number ones. And um, they always kept putting it as one P because the car was purple, which was the color we got it. Um, and we ended up racing it last year as a purple car. So instead of that, we just decided to put the one J on there and that stuck. We like it. And this might be a little corny, but I think you're also, uh, like you say, number one in someone's heart, someone's heart because your wife, Jessica, just said, I love you, uh, Jeremy. So, uh, so that's probably the other reason why you're number one, right? Oh yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm number one in her book and that's all that matters, right? Exactly. And I'm sure there's been a couple of racers. That, there's been a couple of racers that also showed me the number one sign here and there too, and I think they're fans too. But you know what happens. And, and, and that happens. It's something like say tempers and emotions that get the best of you. And and that's something you're talking about your last appearance up at Ken Ross on June 29th. You uh, you qualified fastest time. You started uh, like I said. You finished ninth, and then the next next time at Onaway, you finished fifth. Can you talk a little bit about those finishes and? what you have to change heading into uh, this weekend? Well, uh, actually, there's a lot of change because um, three weeks ago at Onaway, we ended up uh, totaling our car. Uh, so that car was scrapped, and we had gotten it a lot better this year. I mean, we were – it got really good. So we have a brand – so we had a brand-new car. First time out was up in Kinross two weeks ago. It's that fast time, and the car was actually really good because it was 15 mods, and we ended up moving up from, like – I think we started 13th or 12th, somewhere around there. By midway, we got up to about fifth, and we were moving up good. And it seemed like every time we just, you know, it's almost like a game of chess. You pick the wrong line, you lose a couple spots, and then uh, caution come out. So we ended up kind of working our way back from fifth, but the car was actually still fast. Um, and then at Onaway, we were all, we were fast again at Onaway, um, but just went the wrong way for the feature with an adjustment and. Uh, just couldn't run the top side and there was you know there was only there was few, very few cars and they're all pretty fast so starting in the towards the back and it was it's tough so when you're off just that little bit just couldn't quite pass uh couldn't move up so but we learned a lesson with that new car so uh definitely um learning some stuff and like i said it was really good at kinross first time top and bottom so we're hoping uh to go forward from there but you left a little, didn't you leave a little early in the, in the feature uh, at Ken Ross that week? And what, what was that? Something wrong with the car? Uh, actually, no. Um, it was uh, Todd Jackson uh, got he. We were behind him, and uh, him and um, uh, Mark Lasco kind of. I don't know. They got tires right in front of me. They kind of bounced tires. I don't know what happened. Um, and I I don't know if t something happened to Todd's car or or what happened. But I was we were both on the outside groove, and he let off. Mm -hmm. And we both went all the way to the back. Um, so technically, I ended up finishing, but pretty much had to let everyone go on the outside uh, until I could get to the bottom groove because he, yeah, I think something might have bent in his car and he let off. So it was, it's racing, you know. But we finished. It just uh, was a bummer. And this week on July 13th, you're back up at Ken Ross for the baby hot shoe. And the, 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 the winner gets an automatic berth into the, the hot shoe 100 on August 9th and 10th at Ken Ross. What, what does that yeah. mean if you were to get to get that berth, if you could get that on, on Saturday at Ken Ross? Oh, man. Uh, well, going into the, that's that's all we're concentrating on right now is just uh, going into that because that that'd be takes a lot of pressure off. I mean, obviously, you still want to try to qualify good so you can get a good starting spot. But but it also, it, you know, it, it just it would take a lot of pressure off because, you know, you're going to be in it. So maybe you can push it a little bit harder and uh, try to get even better time because, you know, if you slip a little bit, you're, you're still you're still going to be in the show. So it would be huge. A um, lot of good modifieds will be there. Last year we'd raced it, um, and uh, we actually didn't finish. Um, and we had a good run going for a while, and it fell apart, and we didn't have to finish last year. But this year, hopefully, like I said, it would be really nice to win. It's also going to be tough because there's always fast guys there. Um, but – but that's our concentration right now is trying to trying to get that. And and that's like after twenty years of being out of it, I guess last year we can you you can use the excuse that you're a rookie again at a, at Whittemore, can't you? 
Oh, for sure. We were definitely, definitely felt like a rookie a lot of times last year. Um, Cause like I said, we were really good when we did it before. Um, and uh, it was kind of an eye opener cause there was some weeks we really got our butts kicked and, uh, and uh, it made us work harder. We, like I said, we worked hard on that car over the winter and then we ended up bending it and, but the new car is good too. So no excuses now. Now, Hachi, we, we know what it has. To, like, they, they give money to the cancer. The, the Gray family puts it on. Um, they moved it from Whittemore to the Ken Ross because of the size. And like I said, purse of 10024 really attracts people to, to, to the Hachu. But is there something special about why you decided to race the Hachu this year? Um, well, obviously, you know, it, it's – it's really fun to go there and race against that many good drivers really kind of let you know if you do well there. Um, I mean, you don't even have to win. You just, you can just run with them guys and finish decent. You know, it's just like a win on a normal night. Um, just to even probably to, I mean, just to make the A main and, and run competitive is a really big deal. Um, we're hoping to do even better than that, but, uh, but it's also, you know, being that it supports cancer and that affects everybody. I mean, just so many people, it seems like you hear uh, about someone almost every week that uh, you kind of have some kind of connection to. Or, you know, and I had an aunt, one of my biggest race fans, first time I raced was my Aunt Brenda. We were really close. Um, and she ended up uh, getting cancer. Um, and she died just a couple years after we got out of race. And she ended up dying. She was 29 uh, and passed away from cancer. So um, that's who I really... Uh, kind of that's who we race for you know memory um, of and yeah and, yep so so that's kind of kind of nice too like i said she was our biggest fan me and my dad's biggest fan back in the day so so that's that's pretty cool now can you i always ask this question can you tell your fans out there the people who don't know you maybe one thing about yourself that that, that they might not know when it comes to driving or personal Oh, probably. Uh, well, I know probably when I'm not racing, I think my biggest hobby is probably hunting, deer hunting. Um, we actually, we've been up in Canada a couple times, shot a couple nice bucks up there. Uh, every, just about every day of the season, I try to get out in a, in a tree stand somewhere. Um, and I really like bow hunting. And my wife actually got into it last year. And um, my daughter, um, the one that races a mini wedge, she's, I uh, got two nice bucks. She's got one coming this year on the, to get put back on the wall. She got one on there already. So, so we're big. Uh, we like the outdoors, uh, hunting, fishing a little bit when we can, um, picking morels. You know, very very outdoorsy. Now, is that as I use your, your? I guess we still classify you as Northern Michigan from being from Elmira. Now, is that just the Northern Michigan boy in you, or? Oh yeah, that's what I'd say. I mean, that's what, uh, that's how I grew up. Uh, you know, up here we're, uh, you know, I'm to go to town, uh, we're, we got a 15 minute drive just to go to town. So it's, uh, so, you know, I, I, I like being out in the country, you know, uh, you don't really have, I mean, we got neighbors, but you gotta pretty much, you're not just going to like walk next door, talk to neighbors. That's, that's kind of how I like it. So, uh, so yeah, I'd say yeah, it's definitely, uh, we're, we're out in the country. So and something that maybe some of our viewers are wondering, um, being a modified driver, and again, we all like to, like say, driving or not in our pastime, I like to have a drink or two, but for some reason you got a bottle sitting right there in front of you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, this, uh, it's, it's our sponsor, uh, is uh, Luca Mariano Dis uh, Distilleries, and um, Francesco Viola, he's the, the owner. Um, and I met him earlier this spring, uh, company I work for, we were doing a little bit of work on his house and, uh, just kind of got to talking and, uh, talked about shirts actually. And I was like, Oh, you make shirts, you know? And, uh, I said, Oh, you could, we could, uh, have you make some shirts, you know, maybe we could do some racing shirts or something. And, uh, he started asking about what kind of racing we got into. And I started showing some pictures from last year and he was really interested in it. And we just kind of hit it off. And, um, he was interested in getting his liquor, uh, the, the bourbon on quarter panel. He's like, yeah, that'd be really neat. So but I said, oh, we can definitely work something out. And it's it's been great. He comes out to the races. He brings his family and our families uh, get along. Our, our daughters were throwing the Frisbee around the pits for probably an hour <laughs> at Onaway last week. And uh, and it's just been a lot of fun. Like I said, we've uh, pretty much became buddies. Uh, and the families, uh, are, uh, you get along great. So so really, it's kind of a, it's a cool deal. 
And they like say, well, you're talking about Francisco in, into uh, into the into the show here, and uh, it's something. Big question is why? Why did you uh, come into uh, auto racing, short track uh, racing? For me, uh, well, I got into it because my kids really they love racing and they they watch NASCAR and they're really into it. And uh, so I when I when I met Jeremy and we started to hit it off and become buddies, I, I thought it was a great fit for the company and for my family and how we like to spend our time. And and he, Jeremy's got a great family. We I really got to know his his brother and his dad and and the others and his family. And it's been a lot of fun. Good, good, good group of people. And, and Jeremy, it's, it's not like NASCAR where like he, he owns a car, he's a sponsor on the car, but would you ever let him get behind the wheel and let him try to try the, the one J mod? Uh, we actually, he, he mentioned something about that last week and I would like to, uh, yeah, if he can get there. I, I think it'd be a cool thing. You know, yeah, I'd love it's, to uh, do that. <laughs> it, it's really before, neat. Before, really... before he gets into the bourbon. Hey, that's right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll take a drink afterwards. <laughs> exactly. Can you, can, you, yeah. can you tell us, like, say, before we get more into the racing part, is can you tell us uh, what the company's about and uh, how people can find you? So you can find us at lucamariano.com, and uh, we're we're currently selling in uh, over 120 liquor stores in Michigan, and we're in uh, many restaurants and bars in Michigan, Kentucky, and, and Tennessee, mainly Nashville area. And uh, we've uh, uh, just launched this past late April. April 26th was our launch. And so we've been around uh, selling for about two months now, and it's been going fantastic. Uh, we start, I started the company in 2010, uh, started playing around with, with the bourbon and started working with my grandfather's recipes that he taught me back when I was a kid and had a great time with it. Uh, brought my smoker out and brought family and friends over. We really had a good time until I found out it was illegal to do it in your garage. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but we, even though once I found out it was illegal, I had my attorney get me my license and work on it, which took a couple of years to get. Uh, I still continued. I turned my garage into a distillery for about three years, almost four. And I really nailed down my recipes, had a great time. That was, that was pretty, really the best time was during that time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And then, uh, in 20, end of 2014, in 2015, we started putting barrels away in our rickhouse uh, in Danville, Kentucky. And that's where our distillery is, is in Dan Danville, Kentucky. And we bottle in Plymouth, Michigan. So I'm from Michigan. I live in Michigan. And uh, I met Jeremy in, in Harbor Springs at my home up there. And so I have up, up north roots and I have, you know, downstate roots in, uh, in Plymouth. So it's, uh, it's been great. It, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And, and Jeremy, that's something when he says in his garage, and we talked to, on the show before we brought up part of it, brought him on that uh, one thing big is family. And he said he started in his garage. Well, most short track racers, that's where that's where you do most of your work, probably from right after your day job until wee hours of the morning, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think we spend. Uh, we get we get. You can almost put a bed in the garage when you got a race car. Sometimes I think because uh, you spend more time there than. Uh, like I said, well, it's about as many times you, as much hours you work, you're spending on the car too. So now, coming to the to the baby shoe, are you going to be coming coming up for that and promoting the the, the product uh, with Ken Ross, or is it something that uh, I know you were you were there a couple of weeks ago? Or are you coming back up this weekend to, to promote the, the baby shoe? Uh, I won't be up there this weekend. No, I I uh, I. I'm going to be at the uh, Concert of Colors in Detroit. We sponsored that, so I'll be there in Detroit this, this weekend. And uh, and then the weekend after, I'll, I'm going to try to make it, but I, I'm going to be uh, sponsoring the sailboat races from Port Huron to Mackinac Island. So there's a, I got a couple of weeks where I'm going to be busy, but I'll for sure be there the weekend in, uh, in August, August 9th. Through so Jeremy, 10th. Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt there. Yeah. Yep. Jeremy, do do a lot of drivers talk to you about like say having a like say a liquor uh, sponsor on on the car when you're at the tracks? Uh, there, yeah, actually, um, there's a lot of interest in the uh, sponsor. Um, they made the the decals on the side look great, so everyone really likes the uh, the look of the car. I had so many fans come up and uh, they say how awesome the car looks, and, and we got the t-shirts 
um, and they look great. And everyone, you know, we give them away sometimes, and everyone really likes them. Yeah. We, so, so yeah, it's really neat. Actually, it's, it's pretty cool. And they ask for, uh, you know, how to get it, and um, um, you know, or where they can get it. And I always tell them, I said, well, you know, you can ask ask your liquor store, and uh, the, to because anybody can get it if they uh, talk to the liquor store about it. They can pretty much they can get it sold right right there. So, um, and, but yeah, they're always interested in it. And Jeremy's been handing out T-shirts at the races, and uh, what we got to get him is we got to get him one of those T-shirt guns so he can launch it into the stands. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, from <laughs> That'd be the car. Fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let the girls go out there and shoot him up in the stands, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, it's not for, not for risky going around. Uh, like I say, turning left four times, trying to add a T-shirt gun to <laughs> to driving people to hard. Yep. Oh yeah. Lots of excitement at the racetrack, and that's exactly it. And it's something we. I, I'm not support, supporting drinking and driving, but sometimes Jeremy, you probably want to give a couple shots of bourbons to the drivers before you start, don't you? <laughs> yeah, just uh, it'll just relax them a little bit, you know, and maybe they'll maybe it'll be a little easier to pass, right? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, it, uh, we definitely, but the drivers, we definitely like to. Uh, have a couple of drinks after the races everyone you know like i said there's a lot of tough competition out there but you know it's it's a really a perfect kind of deal having the because having the um bourbon as a, as a sponsor because we we enjoy a couple of drinks after the races and as we're talking and kind of going over what happened and sometimes apologizing and uh you know and, and talking like uh but yeah the drivers like i said it's fierce on the track but uh so far it's been really great you know in the pit uh so, and one thing, Jeremy's a great driver. He's he's really entertaining to watch. He makes some really great moves, and I mean, you know, the fans out there really take a look and watch Jeremy. I mean, he's really, he, it's exciting watching him race. And that's exactly it. And I, I use as an example, and I she hates when I do it, but I use my. She does not like NASCAR one bit. But if we say we're going, we're going. My my brother and Jeremy. Jeremy, you mentioned Locke, so number 84 with Todd Jackson. That's that's my brother. And uh, so with him racing now is she doesn't like NASCAR one bit, but short track racing, she's a fan. Like, she just it just loves it. It's, she finds it totally different, but it's it's something not just because we say for the family, but it makes it really exciting because, again, a lot shorter tracks compared to NASCAR, right? Yeah, and it's – I think there, people feel a little more connected because, you know, we're just your average guy, like I said. You could uh, be cheering me on on Saturday night, and then on uh, Monday in your furnace or uh, or uh, in a leaking pipe, you know. So more of a connection there, I think. Uh, you know, it's it's a family thing, and it's you can connect with us, I think, more than or, you can, you know, or they, through the TV. or they can give you the one J salute, right? Exactly. Yeah, they, you know, and like I said. It doesn't matter, uh, cheer or boo. You know, if, if if they're making noise, that means you're doing something. So, and now, is it something you you're looking to expand more with the distillery into into racing, or right now just with with the one car is uh, it's helping the product in the Midwest, uh, the United States? Yeah, uh, we're we're considering everything right now. I mean, we really like uh, uh, what we're doing with Jeremy, and we want to support him first to make sure that uh, uh, he comes first before anything else. But, uh, you know, his daughter, uh, we have our, we, we also have the old Americana band. I write music to tell our distillery story. And so we have our logo on, on uh, Hannah's car, which is, uh, which is really fun. And uh, it's, it's a great band. We, we, I write music with a friend of mine in Nashville. His name's Kenny Fuller. And it's, it's been really great. The last album, you were uh, there with us. I took uh, the picture. You helped me with that a little bit. And uh, it was uh Right there, the album cover we took, and that's called Batch Two. It, we came out with two songs, and it's really, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, so, so yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I think first we just we stand behind Jeremy, and then we see where it goes from there. I mean, my kids are dreaming big. They want to. They want us to go to NASCAR. You know, they they love Kyle Busch. They want to do something with Kyle Busch. But I mean, that's that. Those are big dreams. So. <laughs> But again, but, I just, with, with the way society is today, it's it's nice to see the kids have dreams like that, right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's something where you don't see. And we have 
I'm on the Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario side, about 50 miles off from Ken Ross. But the local racers here, the local racers in Michigan, have a lot of local local companies, and they have a distillery on. It's, it's something new uh, for short track racing in Michigan, and it's something for Jeremy. It's uh, it, it draws a lot of attention to his car and uh, your product, right? That's correct. And uh, and we're looking to expand, uh, hopefully, next year in, or in the next 12 to 18 months into Ontario. Uh, I spend a lot of time in Ontario. We fish in northern Ontario and uh, north of Wawa. And so, you know, I'm up there. I go to Toronto quite often uh, for the T-shirt business. I'm in, I'm in Toronto uh, area quite a bit. So, I mean, we're, I have an interest in bringing my product to Canada. And so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So, I mean, we're, we're looking to, to uh, continue to do more with Jeremy and, and with, uh, with Ken Ross and Onaway and see where it goes from there. We're excited. It's a lot. So. Yeah. One, one last question before we let you go about the distillery and Jeremy touched base on it. Um, right now, um, it's in a few states. And then that, where, where, can, where can people find it or uh, where can they go to? Uh, can they order it online? Yeah, so if you're outside of Michigan, you can go to woodswholesalewine.com and they'll ship it at anywhere. As long as you live, uh, I'll ship it there. Uh, so you can go to woodswholesalewine.com. And if you're in Michigan, you can go to any liquor store, and if they don't have it, ask them for it. It's called Luca Mariano Old Americana Bourbon and Luca Mariano Rye. You can ask them for it, and they can have it to you within a week. So. Uh, usually less than a week, but within within a week they'll have it for you. And, and again, one. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And the price point is uh, forty four ninety nine a bottle for both bottles. So it's uh, for a craft distillery. It's really really low. I mean, good price compared to everybody else out there. And what what we want is we want people to enjoy it. It's, it's really high quality bourbon, and it has very distinct flavors. It, but we want people to enjoy it, and so that's why we price it as low as possible so that it's not a special drink just for Christmas time or for a birthday, uh, but it's something you can bring into your life and drink each and every day or whenever, you know, you have, you know, a drink. So. And, and I use the power of the internet and we all like say people watch from their phones or the internet. Um, where can they find your music? Last question. Uh, so you can go on anywhere uh, like iTunes, uh, uh, Spotify, Spotify, uh, just search the Old Americana Band. You can go to our website, theoldamericanaband.com, and you can look for us there. And we're we're right now just putting it. We're, our goal is to put out two songs every couple weeks, every few weeks, for the next uh, uh, ten to twelve uh, releases. And then after that, we're going to start uh, booking. We're going to start touring around a little bit more. We did a few shows this year, but our focus right now is to to continue to write and and to be in the recording studio. So it's it's been a lot of fun. I mean, being in the recording studio and hanging out with uh, these talented artists, it's it's just been great. And so we're really looking forward to to the future with, with the band as well. Hoping to get and the band out at one of the events too, at, you know, Ken Ross or Ottawa. And Ken Ross, like I say, Jerry Linscombe, Ken Ross, every, after every race uh, night, he has a... Uh, he has a band that, that performs, so that that's the right fitting. And they, of course, you know, drivers have to have a few drinks, so that'd be quite fitting to have the band uh, after one of the races. That's right. That'd be great. That'd be great. So, yeah. So. Well, well, we'll let you go, and we'll get back to, like, say, talking to Jeremy a little bit, and hopefully we can meet up at the track very soon. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for having me. Take care. Thank. You. Okay. Now. B big thing, and uh, we you touch base a little bit about Earl Meyer and that. What is not against any of the tracks? What's probably uh, your favorite track to, to race uh, to race at, and what's what what's the reason behind it? Um, actually, I really I raced Elmira a lot back in the day. That's where I really uh, started racing. So, um, and like I said, every time I get on that track, because we did a little practice in there and stuff, and I raced there a couple times last year. Um, I just seem to, uh, it, it's like second nature on that track, but, um, when we raced before, we never really raced on away that much, um, until we got back into it now. And that's really pretty much our home track now. That's where we really, uh, go. That's where, uh, my daughter races the mini wedge and stuff. What, when we race and, uh, I really like that track too. It's, uh, it's all, it's completely different. Um, 
So I, I really enjoy that track and, and even Kinross. Like Kinross, for some reason, just seems to be uh, really fun to drive. Um, and like I said, Onaway is my favorite track, but I really kind of just the setup of the Kinross track, um, except for when you get squeezed up high a little bit, it drops off in that dirt and you kick up that dirt and oh man, the car goes sideways real quick. So, you know, uh, it's a challenge, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and then for whatever reason, uh, Whittemore, the whole hot shoe, and we went there like uh, probably four times last year, first time we'd ever been there. And the whole atmosphere and everything was great at that track. But for some reason, um, we could never get a handle on it. Uh, driver, car, probably a combination. <laughs> but uh, we just never really ran good. We had like one good run there um, the whole year. And um, that was probably the toughest track. But but um, but I think uh, overall, I think um, Kinross is probably one of the most fun ones to, to drive. Now, I, I use when, when you say about um, on way and and Ken Ross, the big question I have is, would you rather hit that dirt or that cement wall at uh, Onaway? Um, well, I can honestly say I did hit the cement wall one time, the, first, the only time I raced there the last time, but it didn't, it didn't hit it that hard. We just barely got it, and we were able to straighten everything out. And uh, I think we got second at the big – a firecracker fourth of july race 20 years ago uh, almost won it and won the four car dash we hit the wall in the heat race but um when i hit the wall two three weeks ago that was that was a hard i mean you don't realize it you know until you watch it and you see what it did to the car how it was really that hard to hit and it was it's kind of weird circumstances but um that's probably i mean it's funny too because you, would, you wouldn't think so but Last week, uh, with a new car, completely different car, it's feeling different. We are kind of feeling it out, but it didn't even phase me to run up there by the wall, but because uh, you just got to put it out of your mind, you know. But but that's probably the that, that cement wall, it'll get you. I think that's probably the thing you got to be the most careful about there on, at Onaway. And that's something when you say 20 years ago, it's maybe that's talking about age, too. When you hit the cement wall 20 years ago, probably didn't hurt as much as it does now, does it? Uh, you know, it didn't, and... Like I said, now that I'm 40, <clears throat> uh, mm. I can kind of, I, I can just like go to bed fine and wake up with an injury. It's, it's crazy. So, so yeah, I, I definitely got some, some bruises. Like I didn't think I did cause the adrenaline's going, you're racing and you don't feel it happens so fast. You don't feel it. But, uh, you know, by Monday morning I found some bruises and some bumps and stuff and uh sore leg from, from hitting the wall. But you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything. The cars are very safe now and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a really good, uh, we've come a long way as I know, since, uh, even since I first remember seeing the race cars when I was a kid. So. I always ask the drivers and it's always putting you guys on the spot. It's not again against any of the tracks, but is there one thing that you would change when it comes to short track racing in the rules, if you could? Uh, the only thing, I mean, I don't know that there's a solution, so I don't talk about it too much because I think if you don't have the solution, you shouldn't complain too much about the problem. Um, and I don't know what the solution is, but I think we should need to find the biggest thing is uh, tires. Uh, that's our biggest expense, really. I mean, um, they've been putting rules on shocks and putting rules and limitations on certain things, but by far the big biggest expense is tires. Uh, if you want to be competitive week in and week out, Um you know, you might be able to squeeze a second week out of tires, but it's really pushing it. Um, I, like I said, I, I was talking to, to Buddy Gray, uh, who I think you're going to talk to uh, today, I think. Uh, but we were talking up at Kinross, and that's what he said. He goes, you know, um, even if uh, – he goes, we come here to win. That's why we're racing. So even if we end up in the red, you know, we and you need the new tires. If you want a chance to win, uh, pretty much nine out of ten times. So, you know, and it's about – it's 500 bucks a week just for tires. So – um, if they could come up with something, or even a, even a tire that could get two or three weeks out of it, I mean, um, they'd still sell a lot of tires, uh, but if, it, if they didn't fall off, but they really, they like said new tires, the old tires on the ones we're running, you're talking like two tenths sometimes, at least a tenth to two, um, most of the time. So that's a big deal. Uh, when, especially as tight as the competition is these days. And and, and and that's huge. And I use the hot shoe, and we understand why. But uh, in August 9th and tenth, 
Um, you're, you get, you have to get tires through, through the hot shoe and it's a separate just for that. So again, another expense there, but we understand because of the type of race it is and everything else. Um, but also some tracks use different tires and only that was just certain tires. So for drivers, that's hard also when it comes to not being, I guess on the same page when it comes to certain, certain tires for certain tracks, right? Oh, for sure. Like, uh, you know, all the tracks, it, it would be per in a perfect world. Every track would have pretty much the same rules and use the same stuff and they'd all kind of get along. Um, just because it'd be easy and it'd be, it'd be nice for the racers to kind of be able to travel around and not have to worry about uh, different tires, different rules, as you know. Um, but of course, it's never never going to be a perfect world. But they're they're doing pretty good, especially for us in the modified division. Uh, they pretty much follow the same set of rules um, everywhere everywhere we go, even the tires. So um, yeah, at least in Michigan. So so we're kind of set there. Um, but. But yeah, I know in the other classes, like they got the ABC class, um, and 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 some in the four cylinder classes, there's a lot of different rules, and it's tough, you know. It's, I imagine it's tougher on them guys to try to race different tracks. Now, if I it, we we call you a rookie because you've been out of twenty years, but now you're back in. But if if it's somebody we were talking about your daughter getting into the mini wedges, but if you were looking at somebody to get into the four cylinder or up. Um, if there's a rookie, what advice would the first thing you would tell uh, somebody getting into this sport? Uh, well, if someone really wants to get into it, um, definitely, uh, I think, be ready to be committed because it does take a lot of time. It's not just showing up on Saturday and, and racing. Um, you know, anything can happen. Uh, and, and it all depends, too, on at what level. I mean, do you just want to – strictly just have fun you don't care if you finish uh fifth or 12th or you know whatever but if you're going out there to uh, legitimately try to run for the win every week you're definitely gonna be putting a lot of time in a lot of dedication um uh, and um but mainly even with all that just have fun you know that's the biggest thing if it's not fun if it becomes a job it gets old you know so you gotta you gotta remember to have fun and sometimes we forget and it can it can change quick you can have your frustrating nights at the track or uh, trying to get the car. It's, you know, not doing what you want it to do. And it seems like every time you try to improve it, you actually get it worse. So, so uh, just, just remember to have fun. And, and, and that's the biggest thing. And when we say it doesn't matter what sport it is, um, it's about having fun. And again, you're spending time with the family, um, like with the hot shoot. Now, do you bring a trailer up or are you coming up saying, you know, a hotel i'm saying not right in the kinross area but for that for that weekend to spend time with the family how are you doing it uh actually we're we're lucky it worked out in our favor because uh we have a we have property in a cabin right in rudyard um just down the road um so every time we go to kinross we actually stay the night at the cabin there and we kind of the, the family stays there and and so we'll be able to just drive you know we're right we're right down the road about i don't know maybe not even 10 minutes away so that's where we'll be able to spend our time in between racing. And big thing is, and I like I use Steve McDonald just made a comment about you got to have a big pocketbook to sometimes be a racer, depending on the on the division you're in. Um, when it comes to your daughter's car, but also you, um, other other than the distillery, who else uh, helps you get to uh, the track every week when it comes to being on the side of your car? Um, well. The, one of our uh, the biggest help I have is uh, my dad. He's he's the car owner. Um, couldn't do it without him. Um, so and then that's Betty's Restaurant in Boyne Falls, Michigan, right there by Boyne Mountain. So anytime you're going through there, uh, it's a great diner. It's uh, breakfast and lunch. They're open seven to three thirty or seven to three. I'm sorry, uh, seven to three. And like I said, great breakfast, uh, great lunch. Um, it's, it's a neat little place, 10 tables, um, at home cooking. So, uh, definitely couldn't do them without them. Uh, and then we got some help, uh, from, uh, engines by Buster, Buster Feel in Gaylord, Michigan. Uh, we, he helped us out a little bit with the engine and stuff. So that was, that was huge, you know, um, that's a big expense obviously. And, and, uh, he does a good job and we never, uh, the motor just runs and runs. So we never knock on wood we never seem to have a an engine problem uh usually it's just a driver problem but uh um and and then obviously like i said family 
my wife, uh, you know, without the support and, you know, uh, and her understanding, uh, you know, because you spend a lot of money. Like I said, your your wallet's a lot lighter throughout the summer, believe me. And then when you're redoing the car in the winter, it's, there's there's not a lot of relief. But but uh, but it's you know, it's fun. And I use and I I, I talked to Cor, uh, Corey Horner last week. He's from Southern Ontario and he does the Oscar modified series. And he says one of the biggest supporters is his dad. And when it comes to comes to father son, is there uh, Again, you get along, but is there is there some uh, bickering at the same time when it comes to getting the car ready and who's right and who's wrong? Um, yeah, there you, you always have that. Like I said, it's it's such a it, it's intense, uh, it's emotional. Um, you know, it, things happen. You forget to do this, forget to do that, and uh, like I said, uh, my dad, he's always uh, he, he he's kind of high strung, anyways. Um, and I, it's harder on him for watching because he raced for so many years. I think. I think it's definitely harder on him watching now because, uh, you know, especially after we uh, wrecked one car this year, you know, and uh, and then the first race out with the new car, we actually in the four car dash, uh, you know, we kind of got together, just touched tires and popped tire off the bead the very first race. Uh, and, you know, we thought we might have messed that car up. So so that's that's been hard on him. So there's always but but, you know, we most 99 percent of the time we get along pretty good. But, you know, you always have your little disagreements, but. We always get over them fast, anyways. Now I use about, about father, father, son. What about uh, father, daughter? When it comes to when it comes to her car. Oh, uh, actually, yesterday uh, we actually my daughter did almost all the body work because she had a little bit of body work to do uh, on the mini wedge, and she was out there with a uh, little rattle gun pulling the body panels off and drilling out pop rivets and. Uh, and we beat the panels back in, and she was helping pop it back together. So, um, so it's it's really good. And like I said, she, uh, um, it's just fun. She she drives the wheels off that thing. So, uh, it, it's really fun to watch. I think watching the mini wedge races. I was talking to some of the parents. Uh, that's some of the best racing, honestly, that I watch when I get to watch some of the races. Um, those classes, watching them kids race, man, they. Uh, they're they're on the wheel they're pushing it they're and it's competitive close racing it's fun to watch and that's the thing when it was at ken ross company school they had six cards and i and i said to somebody and not, not against any of the divisions but it was i guess you say door to door they don't have doors but door to door right to the finish line and the fans were almost going crazier for you for them than they were for you guys and that's something the kids love right oh for sure yeah it's uh it's really neat and and it kind of opens them, you know, they get, they get a little more exposure. They, they get to actually have uh, people cheer for them and they, people come up and talk to them and tell them, you know, good job. And um, you can see it, it really helps like with their confidence and uh, kind of, you know, they can kind of get out of their, their shell. And uh, it's just a really good thing. Like I said, I mean, uh, and just uh, the biggest thing is to remember to tell the kids have fun um, and, and, you know, and, you're racing for a trophy. Like I said, I like that they, you know, you get top three, get a trophy, not everybody. And, and, you know, when you don't get a trophy, you got to congratulate everyone. And uh, I always tell them, uh, lose just like you win, you know, and win just like you lose uh, respectfully. And, and it's okay to lose, just come back harder, work harder for the next uh, time. So, so there's a lot of good lessons in it too, for the kids. Well, Jeremy, I can't uh, thank you enough for taking the time away from the garage. Uh, now you can go in and have another drink of bourbon and, uh, Maybe we can get you on camera at the track uh, this weekend after the baby shoot. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, man. It'd be nice to. Uh, that would be uh, the just probably the best thing. That uh, that'd be our highlight of our uh, comeback so far. <laughs> well, thank you, so, man. Though, but, we'll yeah, see you again. All right, see you then. Thanks. Bye. Now, now our, our next guest is uh, uh, Buddy Gray the Fourth. Uh, probably just getting a, a little tired from Indiana, coming back from Fort Wayne. But how are you today, buddy? I'm doing great, Jay. How are you? Good, good. Before we get into talking about Indiana and Fort Wayne yesterday, uh, can you talk a little bit? You're driving the 24 and the 14. Can you just tell our audience a little bit about how you're crazy your summers with those two different cars? 
Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm very thankful. I ha obviously have our own team car that we race a lot up around here. And then I'm very fortunate to drive for Steve Elliott um, in his car. Uh, we do a lot of marquee iCar shows with him. And uh, it's I'm very grateful for the opportunity he's given me. And to be able to work with Bergenester Race Cars again this year, it's been uh, it's been awesome. And we're getting faster and faster every week with both cars. So it's a lot of fun, and uh, I love doing it. And this this weekend, a little bit different, I guess a different setup to what a lot of people are, aren't used to when they're watching short track racing. Like you say, when you're in Fort Wayne, is you did 100 laps, then the late models went, then you did another 100 laps. And first race, you started 15th, came across in 10th. Second one, you started in 10th and you ended up in fourth, but in a cloud of smoke. Um, so, and like I say, I was watching your mother's feed, so you know what mums re how mums react when, when when that happens. But can you talk a little bit about that, like the two different, uh, that setup is and what it's like to race a uh, race like that? Um, it was a very interesting uh, ordeal for sure. Um, something that we're not really used to in the asphalt world, racing through heat races and whatnot. And two different races and all that we did but uh, it was a lot of fun i really enjoyed it uh luckily we actually had a pretty good car throughout the whole weekend um a little bit uh driver error driver mistake and just getting used to the tracks and figuring out how to drive it and how to adjust to the different tracks it has to do with a lot of it but uh our, our car was a lot better than some of the box scores that showed um actually we started we we, we were like six quick in practice but with I mean, 40 some cars, I mean, you have to be so, so crucial in hitting your marks when it comes to something like qualifying. Um, everyone picks up, you know, we picked up, you know, not hardly much at all from where we were at in practice and we ended up 15th. But uh, luckily we ended up finishing second in our heat race, uh, transferred through there. And uh, they reverted back kind of to qualifying time. So that put us deeper in the field. Um, so we were doing good. Uh, we, our uh, game plan didn't quite exactly go how we wanted it to. I mean, we were moving up through the field, um, but we were going and, you know, like I said, our game plan just didn't execute properly. And we, a couple cars, you know, just the way the lines went and didn't go throughout the race, it just kind of hurt us a little bit. And then coming to the, actually it was at the end of the first hundred laps, um, on the last lap, guys kind of got together and we uh, ended up getting involved with that. You know, we were up inside the top 10. You know, after starting 15th, um, ended up getting the, the right front tour off of it. So while the late model race was going on, we went back to the pits and my whole crew helped out. We re totally re rebuilt the right front and all the steering in the car and uh, got as close as we could. You know, it still wasn't perfect, but we uh, made it work and went back out for the second hundred and the car was rolling pretty good and ended up in, with the top five. So we were pretty happy. And it's something... Uh yesterday at the like say the, the 200 laps but the first 100 laps uh uh travis eddie the number 78 won and won the first ten thousand dollars and then, then then the second 100 you had eddie right on your butt and uh he was running fifth he was running fourth now when you have somebody like travis's experience pushing you like that um and then i think he went off for some of them. i think he went off for ties or something um how does how does that affect you when you have somebody who just won ten thousand uh following you uh, around uh, turning left? Uh, it just makes you want to be on your A game. I mean, but really in an event like that, you just want to be on your game the whole weekend, you know, because there's so many good good drivers and good cars, you know, and it's not necessarily just one person. It's, you know, when you're racing against guys like Scott Hans, Jeff Lane, you know, Tyler Rorick, you know, Brian Nestor, I mean, Travis who won the race and then, you know, like Matt Dimmitt, he's a local that wins all the time there and wins a second race, you know, I mean, you just got to be got to be so stringent on what you do and you got to, I mean, you have to be so accurate in everything you do. And it is, uh, it's very critical to just be as good as you can be. And, that, and that's something like you say, the 24 family owned, like say great family in that. And then the 14 Steve, uh, Steve Elliott racing, um, both Nestor cars, but two totally different cars. So how do you, how do you adjust every week when a lot of drivers, like we just had Jeremy on, and he's driving the one J all the time where you're jumping back and forth to different cars. How does, how do you get used to that? Um, we, we try to get the car, obviously like chassis wise, we, we try to get it to feel exactly the same. You know, we want it to feel really good in race conditions. Um, my car actually is a 2001 
so it's a little bit of an older chassis, you know, comparing to the 14 car where it's a newer updated version after the years go by and everything changes. Um, but like I said, we try to make it feel the same setup wise, you know, obviously there's going to be differences between the seat and the motor and the brakes and all, all that stuff's going to be slightly different, you know, but, uh, at the end of the day, you just got to adjust and you got to make it feel as good as you possibly can for yourself and for the race conditions. And that's thing you say 2001, you just passed, we, you just had your 21st birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something that car is only three years uh, younger than you. So that's something that, uh, it's the car's been around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's been a good car for us. You know, we, uh, when we hit the wall a couple years ago down in Florida, we, we ended up putting a new clip on it, you know, and it's, we did a whole bunch of patching on it this winter, you know, it's just, it's getting kind of old and wore out, but, uh, it's, it's still going fast for us. And, uh, luckily those Bergenester race cars are still hold true and through every weekend for us. And, uh, it's, it's fast pretty much everywhere we go. And the next couple of weeks you're busy, like this weekend you have the baby shoe and it's something if, if people who are watching don't know, uh, the, the hot shoe 100 in August is like say put on by your family, but hosted by your family, but put on with probably over a hundred volunteers. But this weekend, it's the baby shoe where whoever wins the the, the modified division gets an automatic berth into the to the hot shoe 100. And then you're like say the 27th, you're back Kinross again, and the third of August, you're at Springport. Um, what what keeps you grounded so much with being behind the wheel so much of the time? Other than like you're sitting in the garage now, what keeps you grounded? Um, I don't know. I mean, like it's just what we love to do, and like. Being from northern Michigan, the winters are so long, and we just love racing all the time. So we just we just want to race as much as we can. I mean, it's it's what we it's what we love to do, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. So obviously, it can get strenuous at times, you know, running around and you know trying to figure out scheduling, you know, and trying to find the finances to go do it. But uh, it's what we love, and it you just gotta like I said, be on your game, you know, for every time you go to the racetrack. So. But if you if you love what you do, it's not it's not strenuous, you know. It's it's all about having fun. And if we didn't have fun, we wouldn't do it. So that's why we do it every weekend because we love it that much. And that's what Jeremy said too. And like this being the third week of me doing the show this year for 2019, the two biggest thing is uh, is fun and family. And you you get to do both. And sometimes I I know the family gets I, I want to say that motor home. I don't want to say tin can, but they all get into that into that motor home and that tin can for the weekend. How does how, how does that uh, uh, work for uh, when you guys are traveling on the road? Oh, it's it is honestly so nice, and like I can't thank my family enough for everything they do for me. Um, having them at the racetrack and having my friends there at the racetrack is is so huge for me. You know, I love being able to share the highs of the sport with them and being able to just spend time with them. You know, like this weekend we were down at Bearfield. You know, we took the motor home down and. We got to camp and be with all of our friends, you know, down there and just had a good time, you know, win, lose or draw. It was just, just fun to be there and be with everyone. And, you know, it was just, I love the fact that they, they want to do it with me as much as I want to do it with them. And it's something I was talking to Jeremy about the hot shoe 100. And again, your family's involved. Your dad does the tech. Your mom is more or less the business end of it. Like your dad says, um, but it's something when, when it comes to the hot shoe, some of the guys you competed against this past weekend in Indiana will be coming up. And the the, the Jerry Linscombe and his, his volunteers at, at Ken Ross do an amazing job. Um, but some guys who race day in, week in, week out, um, it's going to be quite competitive on August 9th and 10th. How do you how do you prepare for something like that weekend uh, at Ken Ross? Um, like I said before, it's just when – the field is so good and you have all those good cars and good drivers. You just, you have to come up with a game plan and you have to learn to strategize with it and you have to stick to it and you just have to be so critical with everything you do all the time. I mean, it, whether it be, you know, setting sway bars, setting stagger, whatever you got to do, you, you always have to do it the same. So you know what adjustments do what, and you always have to be on your A game because everyone else is going to be so good and everyone else will be on their A game. And it's something I ask every driver, and usually it's usually it's dad or stepdad um, who who helps in the garage. And I ask it, Jeremy, and it's something your your dad's been racing probably before you were born. Um, but when when it comes to you unloading the car, probably last night or or today to get ready for this weekend, um, who who wins the arguments when it comes to uh, who's uh, who's right when uh, you're, you're changing things in the cars? Um, 
that's that's uh it's we often butt heads you know it's me and my dad out here a lot so we butt heads every now and then but you know like we try to do everything so consistently and you know my dad has a lot of knowledge of what what to do and i consult with you know brian at Esther race cars a lot too you know and he helps a lot you know with the driver feedback you know and everything that he involves us with but um you know my, my dad's been doing it for i don't know 25 26 years now and he, he's done more in racing than i probably will ever do so it's cool to have him you know always helping me adjust on the car and do it do what we need to do you know and have a good set of eyes you know and someone with knowledge but at the end of the day i'm the one in the race car you know and I, i'm the one that can feel what the car is doing so i need to put my my best guess my ed- best education into the car so i can make it feel how i want it to feel so you're saying you're you're right then <laughs> i wouldn't say that but it's, uh, I, I could be wrong a lot of the times but you know and I, it is what it is you know we go out there and if it's good it's good if it's bad it's bad so it's all it's all racing and you just take it in stride and it's something you, you you travel a lot of tracks throughout Midwestern United States and sometimes down farther into the south of the states. But from from you being twenty one, some a lot of short tracks are closing, uh, it, not just just in in this area, but in the states. For me, I guess the young person's perspective is: is it just the interest, or is it just hard to compete with other tracks? See, like I don't know. It's always a tough question because you see you see these tracks closing down. And at the end of the day, it's all about working together because, like, I don't really think short track racing is dying. I mean, you always hear, like, these NASCAR guys talk about we need more short tracks, more short tracks, and we need to, you know, bring back the grassroots racing. And I think it's alive and well. But, like, for example, you take, like, an Xfinity team, and they, a lot of people should think that they run, should run an IRP in Indianapolis, a small track. But financially, it's a lot smarter for the car owners to race at the big track, you know, with the Cup Series, you know, and, you know, the at Formula One cars and all that stuff because it's financially smarter for them to get a backer through sponsorship. So, but on the flip side, you get those cars to come to a smaller short track like IRP, you'll get the fans and it'll only positively affect the racetrack you know so it's going to help them and then you can you can bring in more money which is going to help you know with all your weekly racing too so at the end of the day it's all about working together and finding common ground you know there's there's no answers for it but at the end of the day you just got to work together and find what's going to be best exactly and that's going to where ken ross moved from sundays to saturdays and jerry we have touched base uh, jerry linskin who who does i guess promoting over there and that and he says saturdays he thinks is was a better move and is bringing more people into the stands creating more interest and at the same time it, it, eventually with the more interest we'll create hopefully more drivers to come to the track too right yeah no it's i think it's really worked out well for him um sunday is always afternoons are always tough you know guys are wanting to wind down from the weekend you know and it's always tough to get back to work on Monday morning and I mean, you always got cookouts and going on the boat and whatever you want to do. But, uh, I mean, like I said, there's no, there's no perfect answer to whatever there is. Like I said, it's just, it's all about what's going to work best for you and what's going to bring the most people and get you, you know, boost up your fan count, boost up your car count and just help the community thrive. And this one putting you on the spot, and I said it to your dad, but I know you're in a Brian Nestor car. How do we get somebody else in the, the winner's circle this year at Hot Shoe when Brian's had the last two? Man, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that guy, he's so good everywhere he goes. Um, he's Like I said, he's one of those guys that he comes with a game plan, and he can execute it, I mean, perfectly and ev- everywhere he goes. And he's one of the best guys at just riding it out, riding it out, and once – once everyone's burned all their stuff up, he can take off and put down the fastest laps of the race. So you you really have to execute perfectly to be someone like him because he's so good at what he does. And make sure he doesn't get that first poker chip. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's definitely uh, definitely a lot of luck in racing too. You know, but it doesn't seem like he needs it a lot of the time because he's one of those guys. Even if he doesn't have the best car. 
you can usually outdrive a lot of the a lot of the other competitors too. So he he's just that good. And like you said, you brought up NASCAR, and we'll say luck. Yesterday, a twenty year old wins his first race with luck because of thirty three laps left because of rain delay. So sometimes luck does come with a driving car, does it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, like us as race car drivers, we'll we'll take it any way we can get. You know, and it's it's cool to see the young guys get the win at the top level like that. You know, and you can't complain, but you always gotta always keep grounded and always keep your head to the grindstone and always always keep working and always find more speed. And the last question I always ask, and I know your mom and dad, you think quite a bit, um, but and Brian Nestor, uh, who else would you uh, like to thank? Who helps you get to the track every week? Um, all my sponsors on the car. Um, I can't thank them enough. Like I said before, you know, financially the sport is so tough. So without them, I couldn't do it. You know, I go. I mean, as soon, as soon as the new year rolls around, January, February, I start hunting for sponsors so I can go do it. So without those guys, I, I couldn't do any of this. And like I said, my family, Bergen Nest Race Cars, Steve Elliott Racing, you know, um, those guys just helped me out so much. And without them, I really couldn't do it. And it's uh, it means a lot for their support. Well, buddy, I can't th- uh, thank you enough for taking the time out of, uh, like you say, working on the car and that and getting ready for the baby shoe this weekend. And hopefully we might uh, be able to get you on the camera after uh, a victory uh the baby shoe this weekend at Kinross. Yeah, we can sure hope so. I thank you, Jay, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, and we'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye-bye.